Trade Attorney for Ladies. Life, liberty, and the purchase of happiness has become the new American dream. Psychologist David Myers, who spent six years examining hundreds of studies on happiness for this book, says once you get past poverty, money doesn't help, no matter how much stuff you buy. The stockpiles of CDs, the closets full of clothes, the uh, big screen stereo TV systems. Doesn't do it. Clearly it doesn't do it. Uh, people having achieved that level of wealth have now adapted to it and it takes new increments, a faster computer, a bigger TV screen or whatever, to rejuice the joy that the initial purchase gained for them. To rejuice the joy. You see it in babies. Give a three-month-old a mobile with two objects and most like it. But researcher Jeffrey Fagan of St. John's University says if kids are given a ten-object mobile and then you try to get them to go back to the two-object one, they lose interest or cry. We get used to having more and it doesn't work anymore. That's right. And that's why today with double the incomes and double what money buys for us, we're no happier than we were 40 years ago. Still, in a culture that celebrates affluence, aren't the richest people happier? Probably not. A survey of 49 of the Forbes richest found little difference. In fact, 37% reported happiness levels less than average. A drive to left. If it's high enough, it's gone. Yeah. Maybe it's because if money's how you keep score in life, it's hard to stay content. Ricky Henderson was happy with a $12 million contract. Oh. Canseco bids for the second homer of the inning. Until Jose Canseco got more. Then Henderson refused to attend spring training, saying his pride was hurt. We attain a new level of success, and then we compare ourselves to those who are a rung or two higher on the ladder and feel relatively miserable. Guests included Prince Alfonso of Marbella, the Duchess of Sevilla. I mean, just look at the lifestyles of the rich and famous. Don't they look happy? Wouldn't you like to be like them? Yeah, I am. I'm on TV. <laughs> so are you very happy? <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe I'd be very happy if I had my own kingdom. She does look like a fairy princess. She wanted it to be so special, and it is. What could be a better example of how all the money and fame in the world won't guarantee happiness than the saga of the princess? Now she talks about feeling useless and hopeless and hating herself. It seems that no matter how much we have, many of us are just convinced there is more happiness over there. When we return, we'll tell you what the researchers say does make people happy. There is hope. What a whiner I am. I have a great job, a great family, yet I'm not very happy most of the time. I'm usually worrying about something. Is this a trait I acquired, or might my brain just be programmed that way? <laughs> Identical twins, Barbara Herbert and Daphne Goodship, are very happy people. It's so natural to laugh. It's like breathing. <laughs> We're happy. Oh, yes. You know, it's just as easy as that. You little mermaid there. <laughs> you might explain their happiness as a result of a good childhood, or perhaps their influence on each other. Except that as kids, they never knew each other. Soon as they were born, they were given up for adoption. Barbara didn't even know she had a twin until she was 30. My um, stepsister didn't see her very often. And I don't know what made me remember this. She just said at one time there was another one of you. And lo and behold, I discovered I'd got a twin sister 12 minutes older than I was. Barbara set out to find her twin. She got newspapers to run stories until eventually she reached Daphne and arranged for a meeting in London. The train stopped at King's Cross and I opened the door and Barbara was standing just there. We felt as though we were best friends and we'd known each other all the time. It was like meeting a long lost friend we hadn't seen for a while. Coverage of the meeting caught the eye of University of Minnesota psychologist Thomas Bouchard. He invited Barbara and Daphne to take part in what was to become the world's most thorough study of twins raised apart. When they got here, they really uh, shook us up in terms of a remarkable similarity. They had uh, an extremely <laughs> outgoing temperament. They had a tendency to break out in laughter and giggle. The lab named them the Giggle Twins. Oh, my beloved sister! <laughs> We find other twins that are remarkably low on such characteristics. It's difficult to get them to be cheery. They tend to be a bit depressed and down. 
Bouchard's studies have found that identical twins, whether raised together or apart, still share the same disposition. If only environment shaped our personality, identical twins were apart would have no similarity. And yet they're every bit as similar as identical twins were together. So we're looking at about a 50% effect of genetic influences. But that's a pretty sizable effect, given that for many, many years, psychologists thought there were no genetic effects at all. It is definitely nature. I mean, to say I don't think the environment or anything else has affected us. It's just what we are like. We're like nothing else we've ever seen. <laughs> so does this mean that happiness is something we're born with? That we either have it or we don't? Well, the researchers now say, to a large extent, that's true. We are on the threshold of a revolutionary change in how we study human behavior. For the very first time, we can peer inside the black box. At the University of Wisconsin, psychologist Richard Davidson is trying to photograph happiness. Using a brain imaging device, Davidson takes a kind of x-ray that shows which section of the brain is most active when you're feeling happy. Glucose is being burned here, and that's the emotion. This is as close as we can come to a snapshot of what the brain is doing during certain emotional states. So if a person's happy and Davidson's watching her brain, he can see where the happiness happens. We discovered that people differ quite dramatically in the extent to which they have activity in this part of the brain, the left frontal area. And it turns out that people who have more activity in that area of the brain are happier. How do you know? They can tell us. Another way is we observe their behavior. If they smile more, we make the inference that they're happier. No, sir. They're the kind of people who are just very enthusiastic. Sharing. As contrasted to me. Ow. Could this just be my brain chemistry? It actually wasn't bad. But well, I might as well take advantage of being here and get a free test. Another way they monitor brain activity is to put lots of electrodes on someone's scalp and then measure which part gives off the most electricity. Davidson has test subjects look at slides chosen to elicit different emotions. The EEG machine is supposed to tell me what my capacity for happiness is. There are certain brains that are more predisposed to experience happiness compared to other brains. You're just born with it. Just born with it. What makes them think we're born with it, rather than it being something we acquire through life's experience, is not only the twin studies, but tests on kids. Here at the University of Maryland, they found the same differences they found in adults. They start testing kids as early as two days after birth. Babies who smile a lot have more left frontal activity, and these patterns remain consistent as they grow older. Children come into the world with certain temperaments. Researcher Ariana Shahanfar. Children don't come in as a clean slate, as some people believe. They come in with a certain predisposition, a biological predisposition, to display certain emotions. <laughs> you see the different emotions watching the kid. Evan's almost always cheerful. A marked contrast to this boy who seemed sad throughout, even when Evan and some of the others tried to involve him. Now, he isn't a regular test subject, so maybe he was just having a bad day. But Evan was tested. Okay, astronaut Evan, are you all ready for mission one? He's used yeah. to the test. Okay, the they make it more palatable Four, to the kids by telling three, them it's a spaceship two, game. One. It's a spaceship. Cheerful Evan shows lots of left frontal activity. Come feed my magic note. This boy's test shows much less. And you can see that in his behavior when he's confronted with this clown. Compare that to his younger brother. And my hair, and my nose, Ooh, beep, beep. <laughs> the researchers say knowing that this is biological should comfort parents. A lot of people push themselves in the pursuit of happiness, but what we really need to understand is that is only an added stressor in our lives. We have to uh, understand that we come into the world in a certain way, and to believe, to understand that that is who we are, and to respect that that's who we are.